Hello everyone, Blink here. Welcome back to another episode of the Science Applied to League series, where we focus on applying neuroscience to help you improve at gaming. In this installment, I will cover how habits work in the brain, how you can create good habits and eliminate the bad ones. Many of us are already aware of several habits that we perform daily, whether it's a morning routine like waking up and brushing your teeth, or a routine you have when coming back from work or school, like getting your food and sitting in front of your computer. Studies have shown that 40 to 45% of our daily activities are habits. That means that half of your day is spent in automatic behaviors. Whether these automatic behaviors are good or bad, the brain can differentiate. We are unaware of most of them, because they are automatic and carried out without conscious thought. So most of the time, we find ourselves doing things that we don't want to do, that contribute to our negative mentality, like raging, tilting, or even actual game patterns that make us more predictable, like following the same jungle path, buying always the same items, or playing the lane in the exact same way every game. But we could also be lacking potential good habits that could benefit us a lot, like watching the minimap more often, checking what items the enemy player is building, buying control wards, or focusing on winning conditions. In order to have more control over our habits, we must know how they are formed in the brain. Neuroscientists have found that there is a part of your brain called the basal ganglia, which is crucial for habit forming. The basal ganglia is a subcortical structure of the cerebrum. It's also a part of the reptilian brain, one of the most primitive parts of our brain. Because it's only concerned with our survival and reproductive success of our genes, it will motivate us to always be efficient with our evolutionary strategies, to move away from pain towards pleasure. This means that the reptilian complex subconsciously determines our decisions, making us find the most cost-effective solution to our behaviors. Now, the way your brain transforms conscious action into automatic behavior is by creating neural pathways that get stronger every time you perform the exact same routine. By doing so, the next time you perform this routine, it will be more and more automatic, and you will be less conscious of it. The reason your brain does this is for energy efficiency. You see, the brain weights 2% of our body mass, but consumes 20% of our energy. So the brain's main goal is to conserve as much energy as possible. By making these routines more and more subconscious, they require less thought and thus less energy. Researchers at MIT decided to investigate the neural activity of rats during a simple T-shaped maze with a chocolate in one end. The rats were positioned behind a partition that opened when a loud click sound. The rats would run through the maze and explore. In the first tries, the rats will wander up and down, scratching the walls and sniffing in corners. Eventually, the rats discovered the reward. In their first tries, the rats' brains will explode with neural activity. In concrete, the basal ganglia would work furiously. But after repeating the experiment a few more times, the researchers found that with every new repetition, the rats were getting better and faster at finding the chocolate. And with every new repetition, the neural activity of the rats was decreasing. The rats had internalized how to run through the maze to such degree that they hardly needed to think at all. By looking at the neural activity, they recognized a similar pattern in all rats. Just before the loud sound, the rat's brain activity is quite high. During the running to the chocolate, the brain activity quiets down, and when getting the reward, the brain activity sparks up again. Researchers call this the habit loop. The habit loop consists of three elements. The cue. The cue for a habit can be anything that triggers the habit. Cues mostly generally fall under the following category. A location, a time of the day, other people, an emotional state, or an immediately preceding action. The routine. A habit's routine is the most obvious element. It's the behavior or action you perform following the cue. The reward. 
The reward is the reason the brain decides these previous steps are worth remembering for the future. The reward provides positive reinforcement for the desired behavior, making it more likely that you will produce that behavior again in the future. The reward can be anything, from something tangible, like a chocolate, to something intangible, like a half hour of television. The reason why it's so hard to get rid of a bad habit is because the neural pathways have become so strong that over time the habit is already happening at a subconscious level. As soon as your brain notices the cue, the routine would automatically unfold. The more this habit has been active, the harder it will be to eliminate. In fact, many researchers believe that it's impossible to eliminate a habit. What we have to do, instead of trying to get rid of a habit, is to try to change the habit. There are a few things that we can do. At first, you can try to isolate the cue. By being aware of what trigger is causing your automatic behavior, you can prepare for it the next time it comes or directly try to avoid it if you can. Secondly, you can try following a different routine when noticing the cue, but giving your brain the same reward. This one is useful if the problem is in the routine, not in the reward itself. Lastly, follow the same routine, but give your brain a different reward of the same value. The reward for a given habit isn't always as obvious as you might think. While the reward for daily cravings for chocolate could just be the chocolate, it could also be the resulting social interaction with the folks next to the vending machine, or an energy boost from the calories. Experimenting with the rewards is the time-consuming part of hacking your habits. Each time you feel the urge to repeat a routine, try changing the routine, the reward, or both. Keep track of your changes and test different theories on what drives your routine. Another thing I would recommend to get better at changing your habits is mindfulness training. Dr. Judson Brewer, psychiatrist and neuroscientist member of Yale University and MIT, has researched how mindfulness training can help smokers quit cigarette use. In the study, he didn't ask participants to try to stop smoking. He only asked them to be mindful of the act of craving a cigarette and to be mindful when they smoked the cigarette. By being mindful during the action of smoking a cigarette, a lot of participants realized that smoking tastes bad, a facet of smoking which their brain had ignored before, and they also realized that the cravings for cigarette were just body sensations, like nervousness and tension, and learned to detach themselves from these feelings. In fact, mindfulness training showed greater benefits for smoking cessation than those associated with current standard treatments for smoking cessation. And with this, I'm gonna ramp up the video. Drop me a like if you found this information helpful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.